Thank you, thank you, Crystal. Hello, buddy, everybody. I want to see everybody, so I'm going to change my view. Can you wave your hands? Let me see you. I want to have some interaction. Okay, very good, very good. I want to ask the first question is, do you know anyone who has become more confident, more attractive, and more effective when they speak on the stage after they join Toastmaster for a period of time? If yes, yes, I believe in each club, you know members like this. And do you know any member who joined Toastmasters for many years, but the way they communicate seems to stay the same. I mean, the same as the first time you saw them. Now, don't type the name. Don't type the name. I, do you want to know why? What makes the difference of these two kind of people? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying which one is right or wrong, because we, are, we welcome all kinds of members and it's totally fine if you join Toastmasters just to having fun. I want to ask you a very important question. In three years from now, what kind of person do you want to be? And that is one question that you want to decide. And that's one decision you want to decide. My good friend, Oscar, he said, Toastmasters cannot give you anything but you can get everything from Toastmasters. And he is totally right. Today, after my presentation, you will be able to pick up three secrets to getting the most of your Toastmasters journey in three years. And I know what you are thinking, because last night I have someone asking me, Richard, I have joined Toastmasters for more than three years. Do I still need, do I still have hope? And now I'm going to give you my answer. From the day you decided that you want to become a more effective, more effective communicator, that is the first day of your new Toastmasters journey. So now, are you ready for the three secrets? Okay, good. The first secret, you might want to take notes because it's so important. And many people seem to forget about it from time to time. The first secret is you have to commit to join, to attending every Toastmaster meeting, even when you don't have a meeting role. Let me repeat. You have to commit to attending every Toastmasters meeting, even when you don't have a meeting role assignment. Now, why is this so important? Let me tell you my story and to see if you feel the same. When I first visited a Toastmaster club, all I wanted is to practice speaking English. And when I found when I speak, they are actually listening. So I joined the club. And in the second meeting, they asked me if I can deliver my icebreaker speech. I said, yes. So I spent two weeks writing and practicing my speech word for word. And it went well, because after my speech, my evaluator said, oh, Richard, it's a wonderful speech. I am looking forward to your next speech. And I believe him. And I, so I spent another two weeks writing and practicing my second speech. And in between these two speeches, I also take meeting roles like timer, our counter. I found I gradually developed a habit of going to a Toastmaster meeting every Friday, no, every two weeks. I even, I was so proactive. I even signed up for my third and fourth speech in the following two months. But after my third speech, I have a 
little problem. I ran out of speech material. So from spending two weeks writing and practicing my speech, now it became spending two weeks worrying and doing nothing and spending one day, actually the day before the meeting, squeezing some words to talk about so that I don't embarrass myself on the stage. Speaking experience has become from, has, it turns from a, a pleasure, a pleasure to a pleasure. I was not happy. And I finally asked myself this question. My life was pretty comfortable. Why did I bother to join this organization? So the next time when the VP asked me, Richard, can you be, can you give a speech next time? I said, um, I, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit busy recently and I don't know if I can attend a meeting next time. So apparently they will not assign me a meeting role. And, from, and when Friday came, our meeting was on Friday. It's on Friday actually. And two hours before the meeting, I said to myself, oh, it's raining. The traffic outside is so bad. Um, and I don't have a meeting role anyway. It, really, it doesn't really matter if I go or not. So I stay at home and I felt relieved. And after the meeting, VP asked me, Richard, can you be the timer next time? I, I felt staying at home is not actually not a bad choice. It's pretty relieved. So I tried to give another excuse. I said, uh, I think I need to work overtime that day. Uh, I'm not sure if I can go to the meeting. So I didn't go to the next meeting. And for the third meeting, I don't even need an excuse. Do you know why? Because they don't even bother asking me again. So naturally, I don't have to go to the meeting because no one asked me to go. So I stopped going to the meeting for three months. The point of this story is, if attending to a Toastmaster meeting is a habit, being absent to the meeting is also a habit. And you have to decide which habit you want to keep. My second secret to getting the most of your Toastmaster journey is you have to commit to deliver a speech at least every two months. I know you are, what you are thinking. You will say, oh, Richard, you just said, two minutes ago, you just said, delivering a speech is torturing yourself. Now you want me to torture myself? No way. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to get out of your comfort, to get out of your comfort zone and get into your learning zone. There are many benefits that you can get from delivering a speech regularly. Now I'm going to give you three. The first reason, the first reason is, I'll check the first reason. Okay, the first reason is you, you will overcome your stage fright faster. I knew many, I know many mem new members who joined Toastmaster for the first year, when, when they speak on the stage for the first year, the, the worst enemy of, the, their, their worst enemy is the stage fright. When they, they prepared a lot, they rehearsed, they prepared a speech, and when they speak on the stage, they did not perform as, as good as what they expected. And the reason is that they are nervous when they get onto the speed, um, when they get onto the, the stage. So their performance was a little bit lower. And you can read 100 books about how to, how to overcome your nervousness 
how to get how can overcome the stage fright but unless you jump into the water you will never know how to swim my second reason to giving a speech regularly is you will open your eyes and ears and what do i mean by that i i remember in my er, in the earlier version of my cat speech i have a speech it's about a cat and i my message was having an having a strong desire is more important than a perfect plan and this is what i wrote i i wrote i'm not saying plan is not important but without a strong desire there is never a perfect plan now that is not a bad writing but i was not satisfied because i think it's not powerful as i want it to be so one day i was listening to a ted talk by a by a swedish girl um, her name is greta thunberg you might not heard his name, but you will heard her, her famous line, how dare you? Yeah, that little girl, Swedish girl. And in his speech, in his TED talk, there was a one sentence. He, she said, yes, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. And when I heard that, I immediately thought, yes, I can use that. So I rewrote my sentence as, of course, I write as, um, yes, we do need plan. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than plan is desire. Now it's much, much stronger because I did not devalue the importance of plan. And I also, put the punch word desire in the end of sentence, which make this word lingers. And the third, so, so having, a, having a speech to give in mind will open your eyes and ears. If I didn't have a speech in mind, I wouldn't have noticed that sentence that, that sentence I heard would mean totally nothing to me. I wouldn't even remember I have heard that. And the third reason to give a speech regularly is, I think writing and practicing a speech is like working out in the gym. Yeah, you, yes, you can go to the gym, just watching people working out. It's fun, but you will never lose weight or get into shape for doing that. Eventually, at the end of the day, you have to do the hard work. And I believe giving a speech is the fattest way that you can do all of that. Now you have heard my first secret to going to a meeting regularly, every time to commit to go to a meeting. And the second secret is you need to commit delivering a speech at least every two months. But even if you've done all that, even if you attending every Toastmaster meeting, you deliver a speech every two months. If you fail to do the third, the next thing I'm going to talk about, what you can get from a Toastmasters journey is very, is still very limited. So the third secret is you have to commit to improve each time. I know now you might be thinking, da, Richard, I'm here to improve. Of course, why is that even a secret? The key word of that sentence is not improve. It's each time. And the secret is not about why. It's about what. What to improve. My suggestion to you is you have to record your speech every single time. And you have to watch it by, by yourself. And you find out one improved area. 
or you can just send your speech video to three people who you trust and you trust their judgment and you ask them uh, can uh, for example kevin if you can just give me one improved area on writing and one improved area on delivering so that I, if I can just change that, I will become much better. The key is to change one thing at one time. Don't try to change too many things altogether. It will just overwhelm yourself. The 1999 world champion of public speaking, Craig Valentine, he said, if you want a masterpiece, you have to master the pieces. And that is the core message and also the spirit of the book, Deliberate Practice. The Chinese name of that book is Ke Yi Lian Xi. Now let me conclude by telling, by continuing my story. What happened after those three months? I was staying at home and I felt bored. I felt bored because I realized I haven't improved for a long time. And I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed because I, I realized that I gave I give up my dream so easily. And I felt I was not part of the club because when I see the, when I see they post the group photo on Facebook, I couldn't find myself in the picture. And then one day I was watching this video, this speech video by Tony Robbins. And he is talking about how to build a strong team uh, using a metaphor of baseball. And he said, it's not about if you are on the team or not. It's about if you are out there playing the game or you're just sitting on the bench that the let the record books show you won let the record books show you lost but don't ever let it show you didn't play so i went to the meeting the next time i was sitting in the audience of course i didn't have a meeting role because they didn't know that i was going i was I was, looking at, I was looking at the speaker on the stage and I was inspired. I was inspired because I thought I can do better than that. And I also thought I can help him doing better than that. So I stayed and that is the first day of my new Toastmasters journey. I want you to remember the three things that I said. I want you to remember that you need to commit to attending every Toastmaster meeting. And I want you to remember that you need to practice to give a speech at least every two months. And I also want you to remember that you need to remember to improve each single time. Each time before you get onto the stage, ask yourself this question. What am I going to practice this time? If you can do all that, I can promise you that you are toast message journey and your toast message journey will be very rewarding and fulfilling. Back to you, Crystal. Thank you for Richard's secret. Three things, attend meetings and commit to deliver speech and commit to improve. I will keep in my mind. <laughs> Thank you. And now there are two questions from audience. First, why desire is the key to drive, to drive action in order to engage in Toastmasters? I, this is from my personal experience. I believe if you have a very strong desire that you want something, you will find a way. Even the first way you find is not perfect. It's derouting. 
But if you have a strong desire, you will eventually you will find you will you will start doing it, and then you will modify your way, and you will modify, and then you will eventually find the the you will, you will eventually going to the destination. So desire is the most important thing. It's important. It's so important that if you don't have a desire, you will give up very easily, because you will feel frustrated. You will feel frustrated. Trust me. Thank you. And the second is, can you describe more in terms of Ke Yi Lian Xi for delivering a speech? I, I, I thought about that because my presentation is only 20 minutes. I actually wrote a lot on how. I just mentioned what to improve. And, but actually, they are how to improve. And each area, each improved area is totally different. For example, if you want to improve, to, stay, to speak, to not move without a purpose, then you have to practice speaking to force yourself to, to, to plant your feet and to speak for five to seven minutes. And you have to do it for like two months, three months until you are comfortable and you can unconsciously do it. And it's, it's another topic. If we have time, we can talk about it some other day. And you can, and just like you can, you can YouTube, you can search on YouTube, uh, the work, the public speaking, uh, the the world channel of public speaking. You can also um, type the keyword "可以练习" or "deliberate practice." There are so many YouTubers they are talking about this kind of concept. 